if you want to run the stand a few minutes, it won't take long. Uh, to give you just a little tiny bit of background about how someone became a surgeon. Because there were, there, were, there were three medical schools in the colonies, like before the Revolutionary War, in Boston, Philadelphia, and New York. That's it. They only graduated ever a few hundred people in, out of those medical schools. Yet thousands of people claim to be surgeons and apothecaries and medical. So how did they become that? Well, the reason is that they were they uh, underwent an apprenticeship. If my family uh, uh, lived near a surgeon in the community, if I was a, you know, a, a young teenager and maybe showed an affinity for uh, this sort of thing, then they would talk to the surgeon and be, would be willing to pay him or barter with him to let me uh, come over to his house or maybe live in his house with him for a period of about six years. At the end of this time then, if the surgeon thought I had learned enough about tooth extraction, about minor surgery, about bleeding, about amputations, because that's what he knew, uh, then he would write out what was called a certificate of proficiency. A piece of paper, quill, pen, and ink, and write out my name, date, and in his estimation, uh, whatever my name would be, would be is, is now qualified to be a surgeon. And that was it. There was no American Medical Association. There was nothing to oversee all these thousands of people becoming surgeons. So as a result, there were quacks, too, that would sell fake medicines, and there was nothing to govern all of them. Except people got mad running them out of town, and that happened too a lot. But what did I learn from the surgeon in those six years? I practiced with him on patients, um, but what I would learn would be uh, three, at least three major things that they would do. And I'll go through those real quickly, so you don't sit, sit here too long. Um, one would be uh, bleeding. These are two original bleeding pans that date to the Revolutionary War time. Uh, this one predates the Revolution. This is probably 1730s. Uh, this came from Europe. It's a brass uh, bleeding pan. It's been repaired sometimes. See the lead repair on the bottom, so it was leaking sometime or other. Why would you bleed someone? Well, if you were sick for most any reason, if you had an unexplained pain that I couldn't explain, I didn't know what it was. I didn't want to tell you that. But in my mind, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to bleed. Uh, if you had an unexplained fever, uh, perhaps you'd breathe bad air, you'd pass near a swamp, and you'd breathe in foul air, and that had affected your blood. Well, we know, we know that the heart pumps the blood. We know veins and arteries, we do not know that much. The heart's always pumping blood throughout the body. So therefore, your tainted blood has made you sick uh, with pain or fever or something of the like. So therefore, it makes sense to us, and did for thousands of years prior to the Revolutionary War, to take some of that bad blood out of you. And then we know that somewhere in the body there's a gland or something somewhere that will replace the new blood, or I'm sorry, the old blood with new blood. You have to feel better. That was the logic of the time. Now, they were off kilter with that, but that's what they believed. So I'd have you sit down uh, in a chair uh, at a table like this one, we'll clear it off here, and you hold out your, probably your wrist, because in a warm morning like this, you have a lot of veins. I see a good one right there. You check your wrist for veins if you want to. And if you want to volunteer, you're welcome to. We'll do this quickly here. Oh, I see a good vein right there. Yeah, you'd be, you'd be a good bleeder right there. But the heat uh, on a day like this brings the veins closer to the top of the skin. So a good day for bleeding would be today. You take the, uh, the uh, uh, lancet, sorry, I couldn't find the word, lancet. You cut about a quarter inch along that vein, along it. Don't cut it in two because then you have to deal with stitching it back together. You cut a long, long ways of the vein. Then have the person to simply do this. Bleed into the pan. Now this holds four ounces of blood. How much did I take? Well, it depended on your body size. And depended on my skill, because I would try to match your body size with my skill and determine how much blood to take. Now for a, a woman, small in stature, uh, smaller than typically men are, uh, maybe four or five ounces would be enough. Now for someone my size, or your size, or your size, larger men, uh, maybe six, seven ounces, maybe eight ounces of blood would be enough. But the key was this, 
Well, you had to trust me for one thing. You had to trust me on this. And then I would be watching you closely. I'd particularly watch your eyes closely as you were sitting here, and I was sitting here, and you were bleeding into the pan. Because what happened? What about the eyes? You know, before you, you ever seen someone faint before? I mean, it's not real pleasant, but their eyes start to kind of go a little creepy, and they kind of go back to the back of their head. They kind of get a little woozy like that. All right, at that point, boom, that's when you stop bleeding. Fat is the point, that's the optimum point to stop right then because it's called S-Y-N-C-O-P-E, syncope. And that's an obsolete word now, but that, that syncope, when their eyes start to kind of flutter and they start to do this, stop bleeding right there. <coughs> All right, then, that means you're taking enough and bleed too much, of course, what happens? Boom, they're going to faint or die. Exactly right, exactly. So you stop it right at that point. All right, then... You take uh, needle and thread, such as this, uh, they call it a crooked needle back then, this curved needle like that. This is silk thread, and they would then just stitch back that uh, little uh, skin back there, and then put some cotton around it. Now this is cotton fresh off the plant. Here, uh, you'll notice there's some bits of dirt in there, bits fresh of 